Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And happy St. Patrick's Day to all of you. Well, the promise of that beautiful day on Friday didn't quite bear out. It's uh, back to the 40s again, but it's sunny, windy, very windy. Uh, spring is coming. <laughs> we're, we're nearly there. I think at least, if nothing else, our days of snow are, are over. So I'm really looking forward to spring this year. Uh, having uh, the, the Rick Black Mortar Pipe today, and I am smoking some Peter Stokeby uh, Toasted Burley, courtesy of my friend Eric. Thank you, Eric. Uh, it's nice stuff. Um, and the, the, this pipe continues to impress me. You know, I, I to be honest, I'm, I'm not yet used to Morta. I, um, I still haven't quite made up my mind on it, but this, the, the engineering on this pipe is so good that it just smokes beautifully. I haven't heard from Rick Black in a while. I, I hope, uh, if you're out there, Rick, you're doing well. Um, haven't seen any, any postings from him in quite a while. So today is St. Patrick's Day, and uh, my dear grandmother, where she's still alive, would be very angry at me right now because I'm not wearing green. Uh, my grandmother was uh, was Irish. Um, I'm quite a mix. Uh, you know, I, I suppose that I that's nice because then no matter what the holiday is, you always can participate, <laughs> no matter what nationality is claiming it. Uh, but yeah, I've always enjoyed St. Patrick's Day. Never went crazy with it. Uh, you know, not one of the guys that does the pub crawl and all that, but it, it's nice to to enjoy uh, the day. And I just was watching a bit of the local St. Patrick's Day parade and the Irish dancers and all that. It was nice. So it is quite late in the day for me. Um, normally I do this quite early in the morning, but had a lot going on this morning. A lot of work here in the shop. Um, got large set of pipes in front of me that I'm working on. And then my wife wanted to go out for a bit, uh, so we're just getting back in. It's early afternoon. And I just wanted to come down and, you know, quickly take an opportunity to say hello. It's been a good week. Huh? We, uh, well, we, we didn't do anything yesterday. Um, I went to uh, the one of the local flea markets, which... Uh, so I, well, I went because uh, I'm, I'm looking for some tools, and I, I like buying old tools uh, for much the same reason that I like restoring pipes. I, I just hate to see the things go to waste, especially when they're good quality. And when it comes to woodworking, you know, things like saws, chisels, planes, uh, it's hard to get the quality today that was available, uh, even as recently as like 1930, which may not seem very recent, but there were, uh, Stanley was making planes in the, in the 1800, Diston was making saws in the 1800s, so, uh, but the quality continued up until about, uh, I'd say roughly World War II, and then started to drop off quite a bit across the board. But, yeah, I mean, you can certainly buy quality now, but it, you pay for it, and, if I can find a, you know, rusty old Stanley smoothing plane at the bottom of a box of what is inevitably going to be hex keys and wrenches, and I can get it for ten dollars, that makes me happy. And anyway, I, I I went to the flea market yesterday to to look for such things. And I don't. I don't do the antique store flea markets for pipes anymore because, I mean, quite frankly, the pipes that I find when doing that, they're perfectly fine pipes, but they're inevitably going to be K. Woody's, Medco's, uh, or some unheard of brand that, that's going to be of that, that caliber. And I have boxes of K. Woody's and Medco's that I'm intending to someday restore. So I just don't need more. Uh, there's just nothing I can I can do to, uh, to to improve on what I've currently got. And uh, as things stand right now, I don't know that I'm ever going to get around to restoring those because 
you know, I've had them for three, four years at least, and haven't opened the box since I put them in there. Now I do look, you know, if, if there's a table or uh, an area in the in an antique store that has pipes, I will look at them. But I'm not. It, it would have to be something really unique and at a really good price for me to to buy it at this point. You know, one of the reasons I started working on other people's pipes is that you know there's only so many pipes a guy can have <laughs> and we won't talk about what that number is <laughs> I don't think any of us want to know what that number is but you know it just it just becomes you need storage space for them and uh, I've always been reluctant and I'm, I'm going to have to do this but I've been reluctant to get like a big pipe rack for all my pipes because I don't want uh, I don't want to know how many I have. I don't want it to be obvious. <laughs> and I don't want there to be a finality to when that case is full, I'm done. I'd rather just leave it open-ended. But at some point, I'm going to have to break down and, and uh, build a pipe cabinet. Uh, so at the flea market, I, I didn't find much. But is it here? Yeah. I did pick up this. Stanley Square. Um, nothing special really. It's got some surface rust on it that needs to be cleaned up. The uh, the vial, the level vial is, is broken, but I never use the uh, the level anyway. I just use it for squaring lines. Uh, and yeah, it's in pretty good quality. I've got others obviously. Uh, you know, it's a tool that you use all the time. But this is in pretty good shape and the Stanleys were fairly good quality. It's got a little bit of banging up on the edge that I'm going to need to file down and, and you know get it get it cleaned up but it's always good to have another square and for a couple of bucks you know, it's worth buying the only other thing I saw to give you an idea of how cheap I am was uh, a spoke shave and it was in very good shape you know pretty much ready to use it was, it was you know perfect condition uh, and the price on it was $30, and I'm looking at thinking that I really want to spend $30 and have another spoke shave. And the guy comes up and says, uh, make me an offer. I'm, you know, really, really hoping to, to get rid of that. And, I, you know, he probably would have gone for $10, $15, but, nah, I just, I just wasn't in the mood to, to spend that much on anything. So if it was more than $5 or so, I just wasn't going to buy it. Not that I'm cheap, I just... When when I go to things like that, when I'm when I'm looking for those kind of bargains, I like to actually get them and not just buy things that I want. So it's it's a bit of a game that I play with myself, and it keeps me happy. Now, if it was something that I desperately needed, and you know, it was thirty dollars there, or go buy a new one for a hundred or something, yeah, I would have bought it. But it, it, I don't need it. Uh, and that was actually a big part of the day because there were a lot of tools at this uh, at this flea market. And we're just kind of going around saying, yeah, do I really need another one of these? <laughs> and my goodness, there's an awful lot of uh, hex keys out there. Allen keys, Allen wrenches, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, I, th I think if nothing else kills us, it's going to be an overabundance of Allen keys because they're, they're just boxes and boxes of these things. Every, every, every time I buy something, it comes with one. Every tool I buy has one with it. If you buy the, you know, the IKEA type furniture, which I try not to, but if you do, you get them there. They're, they're just, they're, they're everywhere. And we just had some new equipment installed at work, and each, this is a large system, and I, I won't go into the detail on what it is, but it's got like five different components to it that all have to be integrated together, and each one of these components came with a full set of, of Allen keys. Um, Hex wrenches, I should say. That one is a is a trademark. And we've we've this is actually the fourth of these systems that we've had installed. So we've already got a drawer full of these things, and now there's four more to add to it, or however many. It, it's just remarkable. So I, I do think that eventually the we will just collapse in from the gravity produced by the large collection of Allen keys that we produce. Hex keys. You think I'm I'm crazy talking about this, but the next time you go to a flea market, 
or a yard sale or an antique store. Just count the number of hex keys you've come across. You'll be surprised. I had a really nice experience last week. I, I thanked uh, my friend Eric for um, the Stokeby Toasted Burley, and it is a very nice smoke. Uh, it was nice of him to, to give me a sample of that. Um, Eric, uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because I don't know if he wants to wants to be known or not, but uh, he, he got in touch with me. He had a pipe uh, that he wanted to have repaired, and he's local. And we wound up uh, meeting up at a local cigar shop, and... You know, I went into it expecting that we were going to spend, you know, half an hour or so chatting and I'd look at the pipe and decide whether or not I could work on it. Um, you know, light up a cigar, talk for a little bit, and then drive home and finish the cigar. And like every time when I meet a, a pipe smoker, it, it's always the same. <laughs> we, we were there for, I think, like an hour and a half. The, the time just flew by. I had no idea it was that late. Uh, when we finally left the shop, I, I was able to finish the entire cigar. Uh, not even really sure what we talked about, but it was just, he, he's a, a nice guy, easy to talk to. Uh, we had a lot in common, and uh, the time just flew by. So there's something very special about the Brotherhood of Pipe Smokers where you can walk up to a perfect stranger, and as long as you got that in common, you can probably uh, get along with them just fine and enjoy some good conversation. So I'm looking forward to uh, working on his pipe and hopefully getting to see him again soon. Uh, it's nice to work with someone that's that local where I can just meet them rather than have to worry about shipping and everything else. So, I've got a lot of work going on here. I've got five pipes in front of me that I'm working on right now. I've got one behind that, and I've got a set of three, and I've got a set of two. And at that point, oh, and then one after that. Uh, at that point, I won't have anything to do. So, it's unlikely that I'm going to get that done before something else comes in, but that's good. Um, I'm having, having an absolute ball doing this. And, uh, there's nothing here that really stands out uh, to show you, uh, but and they're, they're nice pipes. I just don't have anything that's like been particularly challenging. Um, I'll show you one just to give you an idea what's going on. So this is a Champ, I believe. Yeah, Champ. It's a nice freehand. Uh, stem had quite a bit of oxidation on it, so I had to uh, sand it back. This hasn't been buffed yet. Um, it's just been cleaned and retorted, but uh, hasn't been buffed yet. And the, the sanding on this is actually quite challenging because you got to get into these little coves without, basically, without breaking the edges, and you know, keep everything looking nice. And then, of course, it's a yeah, well, there we go. It's a military mount. So you have to be careful not to sand the mating surface or else you will not get that nice, tight, squeaky fit. Um, but this is done. It just needs to be buffed, so I'm glad that it, it worked out. But the, those stems are always a challenge, and, uh, you know, they're fun to do. I'm not, I'm not complaining about the challenge. I, I never complain about getting to work on pipes. But it's, uh, the, this stem probably takes as long to, to bring back from an oxidized state uh, as it would take me to, you know, do three of, you know, stems like this pipe has, or, you know, even a bent. Uh, yeah, it just, it just takes a lot more time. So if you have a pipe like that, be sure to keep it oiled and maintain it. Uh, you know, a little bit of mineral oil uh, will help prevent the oxidation, because the oxidation is actually a reaction between the sulfur in the, well, the sulfur, um, is, is bound up. It's, it's part of a. Uh, it's part of the vulcanized rubber, but it reacts with oxygen, and it needs uh, to be in a an aqueous environment for that to happen. So it needs water. So that's why it gets so much worse up around the button because 
that's wet and when we don't dry it off carefully and you know who takes out a cloth and dries off their pipe before they put it away uh, even just a micro layer of water on there UV light from from the Sun or you know just bouncing around the room will cause that reaction to occur so you can greatly retard that reaction by putting some uh, mineral oil on just to remove that aqueous layer and, and replace it with the oil uh, so you wipe, wipe the stem down and put a nice coating of oil on it. If you do that maybe once a month, you probably won't have as much of an issue with vulcanite oxidizing, or ebonite, I should say, oxidizing as uh, as you would if you didn't do that. Uh, and mineral oil, they, they sell uh, obsidian oil, I think is, is the, the name brand. I'm convinced that's just mineral oil in a tiny little blue jar at uh, ten times the price. So buy yourself some mineral oil at the... Uh, at the drugstore and be happy. Well guys, um, I rambled quite a bit today. I hope you don't mind that. Um, nothing terribly exciting coming up, just lots of shop work and we'll uh, we'll get on with that. So I hope you all had a great weekend. hope you all had a very happy St. Patrick's Day um, and are looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.